Welcome to episode two of creating uh, the impossible game. So I've created a fresh 2D Unity project here. The only thing I've done is import my sprites from the last video. If uh, you don't want to make the sprites, they are there's a link to these in the description, so you can just use them in your project. All right, let's go ahead and get started. So first thing we need to do is we need to get a ground layer for our player to jump on. So we can drag that in here. Kind of see how it looks like in the game view. It's pretty decent. So we'll lower it down a little bit. All right, so this is going to have a collider on it. Let's do, we want to do box collider 2D. That'll work. Then we can drag in our character here. And again, give it a box collider 2D, as well as a rigid body 2D. So what we're trying to see here is to make sure that gravity is affected by this. So if we press play, we should see our cube fall. Boom. Perfect. All right, next we need to get our cube jumping. So let's go over to our, uh, over here, create a new folder, call this scripts. Go in here and we will create a C sharp script. We'll call it player controller. Now that we're in here, we need to create a reference to the rigid body 2D. So if we just say rigid body 2D, RB, and then get a Reference it since it's already attached to the object we're going to be attaching this to. We can just say get component rigid body 2D. All right, and now in our update method, we need to listen for the click of the mouse. So we say if input dot get mouse button down. So it's a call only on the down frame, like the frame that it goes down on. Zero is for the left mouse button. This is where we're going to put our jump logic. So it is going to be rb dot add force at location or at position. And we need to say, hey, it's going to be an upward force that we're applying. So we will do vector two dot up. And position is just going to be transform dot position. So we're applying an upward force at our position. Next, we need to say public float jump force. So this is how much force that we're going to jump with. I'm going to set this to a default value of say a thousand. Multiply our up force by our jump force. And that should do it here. So if we go into Unity here, let's grab our player square and attach our script to it. All right. So I set it to 1000 because of the gravity scale. We're going to want to increase the gravity scale, but for now I'll set it to 100, let's say 50. Kind of show you what happens. The falling is really slow. So if I up this to 100, uh, let's try 200. Maybe like jump, but the movement speed is just slow. So if I set this to 1500 and then set our gravity scale to say seven, goes up and down real fast, which is what we want. Whoops, yeah, I'll set nine. Uh, let's set it to 10, let's see. And that looks pretty decent. It's going through the ground a little bit because it's moving so fast, but kind of play with these values until you get something that you think feels right. I think that's pretty decent. All right, so there's an immediate problem. We can double jump or triple jump or jump as many times as we want and the player will actually glitch off the screen. So we need to fix that. To keep the player from falling through the ground here, all we got to do is select the ground sprite. And if you go, or sorry, select the player square and under box collider 2D, or sorry, rigid body 2D, you have a collision detection option. You should switch that to continuous. You'll notice that the player doesn't glitch through the ground when they're just falling like they were before. And I can launch straight up in the air. And it doesn't matter how fast they come down they will stop on the ground. Next, we need to stop the double jump from happening. So if we go back into here, we can say add a Boolean value up here, bool has double jumped, or has jumped, wouldn't be double jump. So 
So we say here, hey, let's go to our jump method. If has jumped, or if hasn't jumped, so if not has jumped, we will jump. Otherwise, don't do anything. So we can jump once now. We need to reset the has jumped value. Because it gets set true to here, we need to be able to reset it. So what we can do is say on collision enter. So what this is going to do, if I grab the right method, on collision enter 2D, since we're using box collider 2D, what this is going to do is when the collider of the cube collides with anything right now, it'll set has jumped to false. So we just say has jumped is equal to false. All right, now we go back into Unity here. And give that a go. You'll notice you can't jump in the air multiple times. Next, we want to add that rotation that happens whenever the player is in the air. Let's go back into here, and we have our has jumped here, but we want the player rotating anytime they're in the air. So rather than using has jumped, we can actually just rename this to in air. Let's say if not in air. Remove this. And then in error is equal to false, but we can also say on collision exit, two D, in error is equal to true. Now the reason for this switch would is for the times that the player is just falling off of obstacles. When they're falling off of obstacles, we need them not to be able to jump in the air. And the previous way we set this up would have allowed them to jump. So if we go back, we can test this real quick. So we can't double jump, but every time the player lands or leaves a collider, it detects it and lets them know that, hey, we are, uh, are or are not able to jump because we are in the air. All right, so now to actually apply this rotation, we need to go back into our scripts here for a player controller. Let's add a public float, let's call it rotation speed. I'll set this as a default value of 10. All right, now if we go into here, we can say if in air, so if our player is in the air, we need to rotate slowly. All right, to do that, we're just going to rotate over time, and it's going to be transform.rotate, nope, transform.rotate. And what we're going to do is we're going to say vector 3 dot forward. We're going to be rotating around the z-axis. And then the no angle. We're just going to do a uh, times our rotation speed times time dot delta time. And that will actually apply a rotation. Let's go into here. Give that a go. Oh. Let's see what that does. When I jump, I see a little bit of rotation. So we can crank that up. So currently it's set to 10. Maybe we need to set to 100. It's also rotating the wrong way. So let's try negative 100. That's rotating in the correct direction. But the first issue that we notice is our player is actually moving across the screen, and we don't want them to do that. Let's do this and set this back to negative 100. And then under our constraints here, we can lock it on position on the x-axis. Let's try that again. So we're not moving, but there is an issue with the player sitting up on a point like this. We don't want that to happen either. So what's happening is there's friction here by default, and that's what's causing this. So to fix that, we can go into assets here, click create 2D, physics material 2D, and we'll say no friction. So our friction up here is set to 0.4, set that to 0. Now, if we go back to our player square, we can drag this onto the box collider 2D. And on our ground sprite, we'll drag this onto the box collider 2D. Now, if we go through and we try this again, we'll notice it doesn't stick in the corner. It's also not moving side to side, and it slides down and lands flat like we want it to. But we're not rotating as much as we want to. We want to do, in the impossible game, they do a full 180 degree rotation. So we can play around with some values here. So let's try negative 200 and see what we get. That's about a full rotation, so let's try negative 400. 
a little bit too much. Negative 350. That's about right. All right. That sums it up for our the basics of our player movement here. Next episode, we're going to be having the obstacles spawning and coming at the player, and the player will be jumping over them. So, see you next time.